It's been a long time coming. Asked way too many times to just fit in this little intro of the video. So I'll just get it over and done with. Here is how to dress like Vinny Hong. Vinny is a character similar to Zach Lee from Lookism, who sees a shift in style as a result of a shift in character. In this video, I will go through a lot of Vinny outfits, from part 1 to part 4, go over the price and brand, and lastly, tell you how to dress like him. Oh yeah, and for those who haven't checked out my last video yet, peep the new channel up. Let's go. It is simple really. Vinny's outfits are split into two categories, the first of which being Adidas Vinny. Vinny is a true Gopnik. In the first three parts of Windbreaker and even the start of part four, choosing almost exclusively to wear Adidas. This choice by Jo Young Sok gives Vinny a pretty realistic wardrobe, one of the most realistic in Webtoon. Vinny wears a few tracksuits throughout the entire series, re-wearing them at different times of the story. That's why I say he has the most realistic wardrobe. It's so similar to how most normal people would wear clothes, unlike many Webtoon characters who seem to have a new outfit every day. We are first introduced to Vinny in a cafe, where Vinny wears an AC Milan Adidas tracksuit, similar to the tracksuit I praise Lineman for wearing in my Fashion and Webtoon video. He wears this one another time in part one of the Webtoon and could be seen as his main fit for this part. Part one not being very long in runtime. I could try and give a resale price for this jacket, but narratively, this looks the most similar to this 2012-2013 AC Milan tracksuit and at the time this webtoon came out, this would likely be sold for retail, as is many of the tracksuits Vinny wears. In this video, unless I specify the price, every tracksuit set would be around 100 US to 200 US dollars retail, not even including a sale, where the price could go as low as 80 US dollars for both the track top and bottoms. Moving swiftly along in part two, Vinny's next tracksuit is a tracksuit he will wear a lot in part two this unique Jeremy Scott Adidas floral tracksuit from 2012. Jeremy Scott is probably best known for, at least to me, the winged Adidas shoes that were very popular in the early 2010s. Even though I just said I might not give prices, these are somewhat rare, unlike the AC Milan tracksuit which is just old, so I will give a rough price on these. I saw a few sets on eBay either sold or selling for around the 300 US dollar region. A full set however, Vinny only rocking the jacket, so it would cost less than that if you were to just buy the jacket on its own. Going through the basic ones Vinny wears in part 2, Vinny mainly rocks this burgundy one when he isn't wearing the Jeremy Scott tracksuit. This purple coloured long sleeve when Team Hummingbird first visited the mountains. This white and blue t-shirt when Vinny adopted a cat. These red and white track pants, and this white and black track jacket that Vinny wore on Team Hummingbird's first vacation. In this part, we also see the first instance of Vinny wearing his red van old schools, a staple of Vinny's wardrobe that Vinny wears throughout the entire series, regardless of how expensive his outfit is. Narratively, this could represent Vinny's inner self, despite all the changes, the good parts of his character still being in himself somewhere. Either that, or Jo Young Sok just really thinks Vinny would keep wearing these red vans for comfort or something. Vans are a staple clothing brand that is always in stock and store for retail. A good sneaker if you don't want to break the budget. These old schools retailing for about 70 US dollars. Now for part 3. As the longest part in the webtoon right now, Vinny wears the most tracksuits in this part. The first tracksuit that we see Vinny in is this green tripaloski that he doesn't wear again. The next is this yellow and black half zip he wore during a delivery. After that is a more unique Adidas tracksuit, this blue Bape tracksuit. This was a 2018 collab with a bathing ape and Adidas for fall winter. Right now, this tracksuit is sitting in various prices. From 160 US for a size small, to 437 US for a double XL, all on grail. Next is a blue tracksuit that Vinny wears heavily, especially in part 4. This pink one whilst browsing the bike shop, this classic black one whilst getting scolded by the school, and this Palace Adidas tracksuit that is very similar to the last. Only one of these Palace Adidas tracksuits were listed and authenticated on Grail 3 years ago. 
listed for 180 US dollars. The last track jacket Vinny wears is this red one that he will wear a lot going into part four. And that is it for the track suits of parts one to three. It is clear that early Vinny is a huge fan of Adidas, his wardrobe consisting of mainly Adidas. To make any comment about the fit of these outfits is that they are very simple. All of the track suits fit quite snug on Vinny, conforming to his body, as opposed to a more oversized look that won't conform as much. Whilst I wouldn't say it's the most fashionable, it is very nice to think about through the lens of a narrative arc through his outfit. Adidas representing the old Vinny as he mainly wears this brand. I have been saying mainly, I confess, as there is actually a few instances, even an early windbreaker, where Vinny isn't shown wearing Adidas. The first is this outfit in part one, where Vinny is wearing a Jordan Parker with Vanskate highs. The Vanskate highs are another classic budget shoe, selling for 75 US dollars retail. The Jordan Parker, I believe, is this grey jacket that released some time ago. Crazy that I even found this to be honest, as I wasn't even sure if this was a real jacket. One is currently listed on eBay for 350 US dollars. The next is in part two, with Vinny wearing a Vetements genetically modified hat. A listing on ground for this hat is currently set for 200 US dollars. Vetements is a brand that is priced a bit dear for Vinny, especially at this time of the webtoon but you know, we'll disregard that. In part three, Vinny is seen with a black and gray North Face Nupsy jacket. The jacket retailing for about 280 US dollars. Another expensive outfit, especially for Vinny, but contextually, these North Face jackets were the hottest thing that you had to have as a high school kid to not get bullied. If anything, this graph that I got from Korea Jung Ang Daily, perfectly demonstrating that the jacket that Vinny has is actually just a part of the commoner class, costing only 250,000 won. Moving on just to not get into how fucked up that shit is, uh, the last non-Adidas fit Vinny wore in part three was this Undercover Supreme Collab long sleeve. Undercover is a Japanese brand started by Jun Takahashi that makes a lot of dope but fairly expensive pieces. An authenticated listing for this long sleeve was listed on Grailed seven months ago for 85 US dollars in a size large. Anyways, after those few exceptions, now is time for part four. Vinny's first outfit is an Adidas tracksuit, the same blue one from part three. He wears this two times, once at the start of part four and his final outfit before transforming into his new character. His next fit is a bit more interesting, still Adidas, but this time the Gosha collaboration with this Gosha Rybczynski sweatshirt. Gosha is a brand you may know from the snot song of the same name, is a self-named Russian brand by designer Gosha Rybczynski. Gosha has had many collaborations over time, and breaking news as of writing the script for this video, has just been designated as the head of design at Yeezy, according to Kanye West. Retail for the sweatshirt was 130 US dollars, an authenticated listing on Grailed one year ago, priced at 300 US for the white version in a size large. Small tangent here, but in my previous video on Joker, I forgot to mention that these Adidas tracksuit pants in Joker's palace fit were not normal track pants, but were actually Gosha collaboration pants. Even the most eagle-eyed viewers not catching on to this. Joker's Gosha sweatpants reselling on Grailed for 160 US dollars. Vinny's last Adidas outfit before this character change is this red Adidas tracksuit from before. This is mainly shown when Vinny was delivering fried chicken orders. The side bag accessory with this tracksuit kind of making Vinny look like an Adelaide from Sydney. Now is where Vinny's outfits get interesting. When Vinny is in a real serious predicament involving his ill mother, Vinny falls into a dark place. With the need of money, harboring of negative feelings towards Hummingbird crew, and making a scene at his job causing him to get fired, Vinny makes a deal with the Tom Brown, Fred Perry, Louis Vuitton wearing devil. As a result of this newfound partnership, Vinny goes clothes shopping to fit the look of Ju Wan Wu. Vinny's first new style outfit is seen in the Louis Vuitton store. Vinny trying on a pair of Louis Vuitton trainer sneakers. Yes, that's the name, in blue. Retail price for a pair of these sneakers is around 1500 US dollars. By far, Vinny's most expensive clothing item thus far, and we are just getting started. 
Riding in on a motorcycle, Vinny is wearing a leather jacket, Stone Island pants, and boots. I can't tell for sure what exact Stone Island pants these are, but they look pretty similar to these nylon black pants with a cinched ankle that are selling on Essence for $300. US The boots are from a brand called Hoka 1-1, a sportswear company that specializes in jogging, running, or hiking shoes. These ones in particular, I think, are the Hoka 1-1 Tour Ultra High 2s. These shoes being spotted on Kanye West. This is an area of sneakers I'm not too familiar with, but the silhouette looks too similar for me not to think that I have it pretty close or spot on. The 2022 release of this shoe has been selling on StockX recently for $230 US dollars, although the listings on StockX are quite expensive for some reason. This biker fit looks super ominous from Vinny. Vinny looking more intimidating and adult than ever, looking like a proper biker. Especially with the helmet, Vinny's vibe has changed, and at least fashionably, I'm here for it. Vinny's next outfit is also sporting the same Hoka 1-1s from the previous outfit, this time paired with a 2021 Louis Vuitton varsity jacket. This jacket, I believe being a part of Virgil Abloh's last collection with Louis Vuitton. I'm not too sure what the retail price for this jacket was, but an authenticated listing on Grailed is currently selling a size medium of the jacket for $5,000 US dollars. Mad. This jacket fits oversized on Vinny, giving him a boxy fit. Very different to the fit of the Adidas tracksuit of his previous self. The oversized white shirt helps the look of the outfit as well, giving it a more straight look. The proportions of the shirt and trousers being even gives the jacket that sits slightly above the shirt a more cropped and tapered look that gives the outfit better shape. Vinny actually did always wear oversized shirts like these with his tracksuits, but with the Louis Vuitton jacket, it just looks like the shirt has so much more intention, even though narratively it probably doesn't. Vinny's next outfit is this Chrome Hearts Riggins coach jacket fit that Vinny wears when meeting up with Minu. I love the details whenever Webtoon artists draw Chrome Hearts jackets. You can see it in my fashion and Webtoon video when I talk about Lookism's Daniel Park, but the small things they include in the illustration that reflect the small details in a Chrome piece is really nice as a fan. The lettering on the back, the sterling silver cross ball buttons, the lettering on the front, the sterling silver back tab thingy, and the little drawstring silver at the bottom all of these details of the jacket are present in the illustration. The attention to detail by Jo Young Sok makes me believe he owns this coat jacket himself. I mean, we know he owns other things that he makes his characters wear. I really appreciate these details and applaud illustrators that go the extra mile. This has a similar fit to the previous, oversized white shirt and oversized jacket. Peep the shoes by the way. You'll notice Vinny is still wearing his red Vans, despite shopping at stores like Louis Vuitton for new sneakers. Infer what you will, narratively speaking. This Chrome Hearts Riggins coach jacket was listed on Rincon for 308,000 yen, or 2100 US dollars. Whilst racing, Vinny actually does choose to continue wearing Adidas tracksuits, although opting for his more expensive Palace Adidas tracksuit. Vinny's next outfit is another coach jacket, this time, I believe, is this Fear of God Essentials jacket, but instead of buttons, zippers. This difference does make me feel like I might be wrong, but I think it's a good guess. For some reason, the way Jo Young Sok chose to change the word Essentials in this outfit and the J. Joe outfit is so different to the word Essentials that you can hardly tell it is the brand. But the Fear of God lettering underneath is spaced the same and clear enough that you can tell what it's supposed to be. This outfit is once again styled with red vans. Vinny placing his foot in them like slippers, pressing his feet on the heel of the shoe. This Essentials coach jacket was listed on Grailed for 270 US dollars authenticated. Vinny's next outfit is this Balenciaga spray paint denim jacket. This denim jacket fits a bit different to the other jackets, especially from the back. The tighter, boxier and crop style of the jacket revealing more of the white undershirt on the back, giving Vinny more of a rock style look. This Balenciaga jacket looks very nice, the double Bs being replaced by double Ds. This is styled with white Adidas Sambas. Not too sure why Vinny is all of a sudden wearing Sambas, but maybe it's because he's fighting Wuin. Wearing Adidas, a symbol of his old self and his dislike for Wuin still existing, is just a game theory. The Adidas Sambas retail for 120 US dollars, and the Balenciaga jacket selling for 2200 US dollars on Farfetch. 
Vinny's next outfit is a bit of a sequel from his green Louis Vuitton jacket, this time a white Louis Vuitton varsity jacket. The patches and overall design do remind me a lot of the Virgil Abloh 2021 jacket, this jacket coming out in 2022. You guys are probably tired of me saying it by now, but these are styled the same as his other jackets. Oversized white undershirt, black trousers and red vans with an oversized jacket. This Louis Vuitton jacket is currently on call inquiry on the Louis Vuitton store, which means it's out of stock. This jacket being listed authenticated on Grailed for 7600 US dollars. Damn. The very last outfit we see Vinny wear is this purple paisley button-up. Correct me in the comments, but I think this may just be a purple paisley button-up. I don't know what brand this could be to be honest. Searching up purple paisley button-up online should net you similar results if you really do want to copy this outfit in particular. And that's basically every single outfit Vinny has ever worn in Windbreaker. I think the story arc Vinny is going through can clearly be seen through his outfits. When he was in economic hardship, Vinny had a simpler brand image. Vinny styling himself in strictly Adidas, reusing articles of clothing, and just all around having a more laid back style that is very realistic for most people to have. After now potentially being the final villain of Windbreaker, I'm not really sure now, Vinny is rocking more luxurious brands with the money he is receiving to keep up the image to earn respect. This is where I think fashion and webtoon now goes beyond just looking at cool brands, but also is an integral part of the storytelling that the authors want to tell. Now for how to dress like Vinny, styling like both tracksuit Vinny and luxury Vinny, we'll see many ideas reused from my Zach Lee and Joker video. I strongly suggest watching those videos if you want a more in-depth analysis of these fashion styles, but for Vinny's tracksuits, Adidas is a very nice brand, albeit a bit boring. I think if you want to look at a few more expensive brands, Palm Angels is a brand that makes simple tracksuits, but instead with very nice popping colors, and a logo that if you're in the know will appreciate it from afar. I go into way more detail in the Zach Lee video, but other tracksuits like Nike Tech Fleece and Trapstar are super nice tracksuits that I would recommend over the basic Tripalovskis. For the jackets, coach jackets can be found from either streetwear brands or sporting teams if you want cheaper alternatives to the expensive Chrome Hearts or Essentials jacket. Teams like the Las Vegas Raiders, previously the Oakland Raiders, have a nice black and white color for the team for you to see similar outfit results to Vinny's coach jacket outfits. For varsity jackets, thrifting at charity shops or curated vintage stores are the best option when purchasing varsity jackets for various reasons that I described in my Joker video. Streetwear brands like Stussy also make varsity jackets that may fit this style. Watch the Joker one if you're interested in this. Something new I will recommend, however, is for the Balenciaga denim jacket. I think whenever denim is a part of the discussion, it would be ridiculous to not recommend a brand like Levi's for such pieces. Levi's is an American company founded in 1853 and has been a staple in offering quality denim jeans and other workwear clothes for years since its inception. This black denim trucker jacket is all right and will do the job for only 75 US dollars currently on sale. But if you want something a bit more luxurious, this made in Japan jacket in a dark blue wash that Levi's claims was made using traditional Japanese techniques would cost 170 US dollars on sale. A bit more expensive, but denim should be seen as an investment and is considerably cheaper than the Balenciaga jacket that was selling for 2200 US dollars. If you want something cheaper than Balenciaga, but more expensive than Levi's, with a similar big obnoxious logo like the Balenciaga jacket, then I think Ivisu is the perfect brand for that. Ivisu is one of the big Japanese selvage denim companies in Japan, and still practices the old method of dyeing and making selvage denim. Without getting into the specifics, as I could make a whole video on the art of Japanese selvage denim and Ivisu, it essentially refers to the way the edges of the denim is self-edge, not fraying, thus the name selvage. Ivisu is a brand that was very popular in the early 2000s, celebrities and the youth wearing it, seeing a resurgence as a result of the Y2K trend as well as a few celebrities rocking it lately. Originally being renowned for their hand-painted aspect of their denim jeans, Ivisu took off for their unconventional jean designs that were super eccentric and out there in looks, seeing similar affection that people have towards Ed Hardy jeans. Ivisu is a brand that has also been faked to shit, 
so places like Depop are not the best place to shop for a Visu if you want real pairs. It is also a bit of a controversial topic when talking about a Visu International. People separating a Visu Japan and a Visu International as if they are different brands entirely. Without hijacking this video too much with Ivisu, I'm just going to start showing you some dope looking Ivisu International denim jackets that involve the signature seagulls and daikok design. Here we have this nice dark blue daikok design for 579 US dollars. Super nice with a come on pattern embroidered in the daikok on the back and seagulls on the front. This 30th anniversary jacket with a bunch of pockets with seagulls around the entire jacket. Seemingly an homage to the crazy ass pocket jeans that I showed Travis Scott wearing. This jacket costs 515 US dollars. The last jacket I'll show is this multi pocket jacket once again. This time bedazzled with a bit of rhinestones. This jacket sells for 769 US dollars. Styling all of these jackets unbuttoned with an oversized white shirt, black trousers, and quite literally any sneaker is how I would dress like Vinnie Hong. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Who do you want to see next? The next fashion breakdown will be a lookism character, preferably a shorter one, so stay tuned for that. Also, I will be posting weekly. Last week's video was on Kilopeda. Please check that out so my channel doesn't die. And check out next week's webtoon I'm reading video as well. K S I yes, I'm an all night, I don't like rest. See you guys. Bye!